Hello everybody and welcome back to Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 4975 and recently I've been looking at a lot of movie cars that we have inside of GTA Online and it got me thinking we've just had the Summertime in Hollywood DLC in The Crew 2 and that added a lot of new movie cars and we already had quite a few movie cars in the game. So today we're going to be having a look at some movie cars that we have in The Crew 2. So the first car we have is the Yenko Camaro from Too Fast Too Furious. It is a blue Chevrolet Camaro with the Yenko engine and also the Yenko uh, livery on there. It's a really nice looking car. You can get this pretty accurate in the crew too. And um, obviously, as I said, it comes from the Too Fast Too Furious movie. Next we have Bumblebee from Transformers and I can already hear you saying that's not the right Camaro. And no, technically it is not the right Camaro, um, but it's the closest that we have in the game. I found this livery that someone had created, it does look kind of similar to Bumblebee so I'm aware that it is the wrong Camaro, but please don't shout at me, it's the closest thing we have in the game. And if you paint it yellow and have this livery, it does look kind of similar. Next we have one of the newer vehicles that has been added in the Crew 2, and that is the DeLorean DMC-12. Now unfortunately we can't get all the tubing and the Mr. Fusion reactor on this thing like we can in the Back to the Future movie. But it's quite obvious that this thing is from the Back to the Future movie. Everyone who's watched that film knows that the Time Machine is a DeLorean. We got it added in this new Summertime in Hollywood DLC. So my thinking is that it is the Back to the Future DeLorean. Next we have the Vanishing Point Challenger. A really cool movie and I really like classic challenges. They're really nice looking cars in my opinion. Um, this is a very simple one to do, all you have to do is take the Dodge Challenger, you don't have to change the wheels or anything, literally all you have to do is paint it white. Next we have the General Lee Dodge Charger, this is a 69 Dodge Charger and you can get this one almost identical. Um, all these liveries I just found in the top 100. Uh, section and then I just scroll down to movies uh, in the tag section and then it will usually bring up some liveries like this and this is a really really nice build um, as I said you can get it nearly 100% accurate the only thing missing is that bull bar on the front unfortunately we can't get that uh, but apart from that it is movie accurate Next we have a, another Dodge Charger, this is actually Dom's 1970 Dodge Charger, I've gone for the uh, Fast and Furious 1 build with this one, but it was featured in multiple of the movies and it changed slightly over some of their movies, but um, I've gone with the OG original one here, taken the 1969 Charger in the Crew 2, I've put the 1970 Charger front grille on it. And then obviously gone for the bug catcher on the bonnet and I've kept the stock wheels. Next we have the Boss Mustang Bullet. It's a 1967 Boss Mustang and this comes from the Bullet movie with Steve McQueen. A really nice movie, a very classic movie. If you're a car fan like myself, I definitely give it a watch. And the main sort of protagonist in that film, Steve McQueen, he drives a Boss Mustang. And it's this dark green Mustang. It looks really, really nice. Um, now, I've actually used the Shelby GT500 for this. Um, it wasn't a Shelby GT500, but it is a 67 Mustang. So it's the closest car we have in the game. Um, so that is why I've gone for that. Next we have the Miami Vice Ferrari Tesserosso and this is a really nice looking vehicle. This also got added in the latest DLC so it is one of the newer cars in the game and all you have to do with this is paint it white. Exactly like the Vanishing Point Challenger, there's nothing you have to change on this thing. 
It was a stock Tessarossa in the TV series, um, so you don't have to change anything on this one. Then we have the Koningsegg Agera R. This comes from the Need for Speed film. Uh, now, there was actually three identical Agueras in that movie, but the most famous one, the one that gets the most screen time, is the red and black one, so I've decided to go with the red and black one here. But obviously there was the grey and blue one and also the black and white one. So you could use either of those as well. Um, but I prefer the red one because it does get the most screen time. It's the most well known in the movie. Then we have Hans RX-7. Now unfortunately we can't get the full veil side kit on the RX-7. Um, but we can get the front headlights to match um, and we can get a few body parts to match. We can't get the uh, correct rear end on it and we also can't get the 100% accurate spoiler but it's the closest build I could do um, with the parts we have in the Crew 2 and if you paint it orange, if you apply this livery then it does look very similar and I get I think most people will get what you're trying to go for. Then we have another stock vehicle and that is the Italian job Lamborghini Mura. And as with the Vanishing Point Challenger and the Tessarossa, all you have to do with this one is buy the Mura and paint it orange. That is literally it. Doesn't get a lot of screen time this vehicle but it is quite well known. It is the mirror that they crash into a bulldozer and sort of wreck it. So if you've never seen the Italian job, firstly, what are you doing with your life? And secondly, go and watch it because it is a fantastic film. Then we have the Nissan 370Z. This comes from the Tokyo Drift film and this was driven by DK. Um, doesn't get a whole lot of screen time this vehicle, but it is quite a cool looking vehicle. Um, obviously I've applied this livery, I found this in the top 100 section again and then I went for the movie car tags and um, it's a really nice looking vehicle in my opinion. You can't get it as close as I would like to but if you apply this livery uh, then I think most people will understand the build that you're trying to make. Then we have Kit from Knight Rider, this is the Transam Pontiac Firebird. This also got added in the newest DLC. Now it's technically not the right age um, transom. It has the wrong rear end on it, um, but it was added again in this Summertime in Hollywood DLC. And the most famous Firebird that I know of has to be Kit from Knight Rider. Uh, so. I've decided to uh, go with the kit build on this, ignore the rear end because that is going to be wrong, but apart from that I think most people will understand that this is supposed to be kit. Then we have the Eleanor Mustang, this is the Shelby GT500 and you can get this one almost identical, the only difference is the two headlights in the centre of the grille are supposed to be lower down sort of towards the splitter um, unfortunately that's not an upgradable option so this is the closest build that I could get but you can obviously make it look very very similar gone for the grey with this and then I found this livery with the two black stripes going over the top of the car and then you can also get the classic Shelby rims then we have another new vehicle, this is Herbie the Beetle, a really really nice vehicle. I love the Herbie the Beetle um, franchise, it's really nice. Uh, I love classic Beetles myself, um, I know that's probably quite an unpopular opinion. Um, but it is really cool that we can finally get Herbie the Beetle in the crew too. You can apply this livery, again, hi, I found this one in the top 100 section and I put the movie tag on and yeah you can't get the right wheels for this which is unfortunate so the closest ones I could find were the stock beetle ones that's why I've left those on there 
Um, but I think if you paint it white and you go for this livery, then most people will know what it is anyway. Then we have the F-Bomb Camaro from Fast and Furious. And this is actually David Freiberger's uh, vehicle from the Roadkill TV series. But anyway, it's a really cool vehicle. Again, with this one, it's technically not the right age Camaro. Um, but if you paint it dark green, I found this livery again in the top 100 section, then it does look very similar. Then we have Brian O'Connor's Nissan Skyline R34. Um, this is another really nice vehicle. Most people will know what this vehicle is. Now you can't actually get the right front end on this. Um, this was the closest um, from bumper that I could find so um, apologies that it isn't 100% movie accurate but if you paint it grey you go for this livery and I think most people will know what you're trying to build then we have Dom's RX-7 now this one doesn't really get a lot of screen time this is from the Fast and the Furious the first Fast and Furious film and they kind of go to a street race meet at night and Dom has this Veilside RX-7, it's like a red RX-7 and then it has this really cool sort of missile livery and you can actually get this very very close to the movie car, you can get the correct spoiler the wheels aren't 100% accurate but they're the closest ones I could find and you can get the uh, livery obviously found it in the top 100 section and you can paint it red and that is going to do it for this list. Uh, there is quite a few cars here. There was actually more than I expected. Um, once I did a little bit of research into some of the cars, I managed to find that there was a lot more than I first thought. Um, so if you're trying to build up your movie car collection in the Crew 2, then thank you very much for watching. I hope you did find this video useful. If you did, please smash the like button and subscribe if you are new. And um, yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.